Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm doing another announcement video. There have been a couple of games that have been announced as coming out or being under development, and I wanted to call attention to them. Um, I know I don't do a ton of that, but I still, these were games I've covered on my channel, so I wanted to give it some visibility because I thought some of you might be interested. The first of the two games that I'm going to be talking about today is called Cold Waters. If you're looking at the footage on the screen, this is from the trailer. The game is made by Killerfish Games. It has just been greenlit. And as you can probably tell if you've watched my channel a bit in the past, it is the, com the same company that made the Atlantic Fleet uh, video game, which was a turn-based uh, video game looking at the Battle of the Atlantic during World War II. They also made another game that was like Pacific Fleet or Pacific... I think it was Pacific Fleet... Uh, which looked at the Pacific Theater. I didn't cover that at all. And this is looking at the Cold War, as you can kind of guess from some of the imagery on the screen here. Cold Waters is kind of, they're calling it a spiritual successor to Red Storm Rising. Uh, so, you know, it, it basically is putting you in charge of a single, I believe, U.S. nuclear-powered submarine during a hypothetical World War III. They are implying that this has something to do with a Soviet landing force bound for Iceland. So just like during the uh, movie or, or book, Red Storm Rising, book that is, uh, where the Soviets took over Iceland. In this case, it sounds like they're putting you in control of a U.S. nuclear submarine uh, as the Third World War breaks out. So you're going to have to uh, do multiple types of missions. It sounds more like it's a story-bound campaign, though. So it's really interesting because I switched the footage over to Atlantic Fleet rather than playing the trailer on loop, but if you've looked at Atlantic Fleet, you'll remember that's a turn-based game. Well, a big difference with Cold Waters is they're calling it a real-time naval combat game, so I'm curious to see if it's like a WeGo system or if it's literally, uh, you know, completely real-time, which would be a pretty big departure from both Pacific Fleet and Atlantic Fleet. Additionally, they're saying there will be over 40 classes of ships, including submarines and surface warships. It will have a dynamic campaign where your performance matters. So I'm always curious whenever I hear that dynamic campaign. I think myself and a lot of you included, when you hear dynamic campaign, you probably think, oh, wait a minute, you know, Falcon 4.0, or it's like an open world sandbox, and, and your performance does matter, but it's just within the context of a larger war. I'm not sure if that's really what they're meaning by this, or if it'll just be one of those things where, uh, you know, if you succeed, you go down one path of predefined scenarios, and if you fail, you go down another path. I think it'll be interesting to see. Again, we don't have a lot of detail. They just announced this game on the 29th. Uh, additionally, they claim to have a realistic sonar model. I'm not quite sure what that means either. And authentic Soviet combat tactics, which will be really interesting. I've had a few discussions with Belugan on BelugaNCampaign.com about the Soviet Navy. And, and one of the things that he always, you know, talks about from a couple of books he's read about the Soviet Navy, the few that are available in English, is that the Soviet Navy was really built with the sole intention of supporting land forces. It's not like the U.S. or the Royal Navy, which were built primarily primarily to dominate the sea lanes and then project power and in some cases support land units, the Soviet Navy's tactics were entirely designed around supporting land-based operations, never really gaining control of the sea, maybe denying access in certain places, but almost always with the intent of supporting a land operation. So it'll be interesting to see how that's modeled or, you know, if, if the game has room to model that. Uh, they also claim that you'll have a wide variety of missions, including intercepting convoys, amphibious landings, insertion missions, um, battling it out with enemy warships and aircraft, um, and then also, you know, your typical arsenal of wire-guided torpedoes, anti-ship cruise missiles, and then, you know, occasionally you'll have a SEAL team on, on board. So it's really interesting. Again, they're calling it a spiritual successor to Microprose's Red Storm Rising, which was based on the book by Tom Clancy of the same name. Uh, 1988 is when the original Red Storm Rising came out. So I'm, I'm really interested to see how this plays out. A lot of the visuals, it feels like the engine is probably very similar to the Atlantic Fleet engine, but if they're calling it real-time naval combat, all I know is I'm excited. You know, there's a lot of naval games coming out that I'm really excited about. I feel like my channel is really in the last year or so di diverged into looking at a lot of naval war games, but that's just because we've got such a 
influx of recent games that cover naval combat in new and interesting ways. You know, you've got Command Modern Naval Operations, which is kind of like a harpoon reboot, but, you know, even better. You've got uh, Rule the Waves, which is kind of that ship designer, you know, authentic World War I game, and they've got a sequel coming out. You've got Atlantic Fleet, which is this really kind of interesting, kind of simple and easy to play, yet fun uh, Battle of the Atlantic game, which actually gives you sort of an ability to have a dynamic campaign and fight the battle out, you know, from start to finish. And then, you know, you've got Cold Waters now coming out, which is, again, going to continue building on on Killerfish's, you know, previous games uh, and hopefully continue to build their legacy. They've had three games come out. It seemed like Atlantic Fleet was pretty well received, um, you know, and it was really reasonably priced. So I'm really curious to see what they do with Cold Waters. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if it's more of a story-based game as it seems to imply in the initial announcement, but all we have is this base announcement, which I will link in the description if you're interested in that. So um, just wanted to call that out. I thought that's kind of exciting and, and fun, to, fun to see that they're going this direction. I wish there were more uh, modern submarine simulators, and I know it's not modern per se. It's Cold War, but it's certainly modern warfare in the 1980s. Um, I keep thinking back to Fast Attack, that old Sierra game, which I think is probably the best modern naval sub game I've ever seen. It's much more of a simulation, uh, but we'll see if uh, we'll see how this feels. I don't think this will be an inside the sub type thing based on those images. Um, it may be you know more of an outside the sub type view, kind of like SSN was, which was much more arcadey than I think this will be. But um, we'll see. You know, I'm definitely looking forward to it. So that was the first one. Um, the second game that I wanted to call out and announce is a game that I've known is coming for a little while um, because I am on the test team, so I'm a little bit partial to it. Uh, but Scourge of War Waterloo has announced a new DLC. So not a full new game, but a new DLC, which is coming out to cover the Battle of Lingye, or Lingi, or however you pronounce it. Um, basically, the battle between the French and the Prussians that was fought a couple of days before the Battle of Waterloo, in which Napoleon Bonaparte won his final victory of his illustrious career. Uh, it was the first engagement of, or first major engagement of the Waterloo campaign. It occurred simultaneously with the Battle of Quatre Bras, uh, which took place uh, adjacent uh, to, to Lingue, where the British were fighting off the French, and then the French had <laughs> a core of 30,000 men marching between the two, two battles doing nothing. But the Prussians were driven from the field at Lingue, and uh, Napoleon thought he had decisively defeated them, which led him to engage Wellington at Waterloo. Uh, unbeknownst to him, however, the Prussians were able to rally and come to uh, the Anglo-Allied Army's aid at Waterloo and decisively defeat him. So Ligne was the battle that took place a couple of days before. It's interesting from a Scourge of War standpoint because, you know, historically that battle was almost, it had a lot more buildings and whatnot than I think a lot of the battles that we've covered with the Scourge of War series. Um, you know, it, it, so it'll be interesting to see how, how the game is received. It's a very unique battle. Uh, it's definitely uh, worth checking out in my own opinion, but obviously I'm very biased on that. Um, so if you want to see a stand-up fight between the French and the Prussians and you've, you're, you know, you're interested in the Scourge of War or Waterloo, um, you'll be able to pick Ling Ye up soon. Um, anyway, guys, those are the two games that, are, uh, that have recently been announced within the last few days. Uh, that is Cold Waters by Killer Fish Games and Scourge of War Lingye, uh, which is by Norbsoft Dev and published by Matrix slash Slithering Games. So look for those. I don't really know when. Look for those soon. <laughs> um, uh, I, I guess uh, it doesn't look like Killer Fish has announced any game, any date. It did get greenlit over on Steam already, so I'm not sure how far they are into the development uh, or how far away that is, but... Um, yeah, so kind of two interesting and exciting games to look forward to. I do want to cover more Scourge of War on my channel. I just haven't had the time. Um, I've got so many, I've got had so many things going on between the channel and, and, uh, you know, working on some Scourge of War stuff, testing that stuff. Um, and then also, um, you know, real life school, graduate school, all these other kind of things. I've also got an interesting series, uh, for Rule the Waves, which I'm going to be doing, uh, which I'll be announcing shortly. Uh, and I think you guys will be really interested in that as well. 
That's all I've got for you, though. I know it's a little bit shorter, not a 30-minute video, just kind of a short 10-minute clip here. Uh, let me know you guys' thoughts. Let me know if you're excited about this, and uh, you know, let me know what you want to see more of. But until next time, guys, I do appreciate you tuning in. And uh, once again, this is The Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.